Hi everyone, welcome to your crash course in learning to read music. My name's Caitlin, I'm from Mechanics of Music, and this is the next lesson in our 30 lesson ukulele journey. Congratulations on making it this far, and also good job for being curious about learning to read music. The truth is, you don't have to learn to read music to be able to play and have a great time with the ukulele, so good for you. The next announcement is that I want you guys to promise you're going to be patient with yourselves. Learning to read music is a whole brand new language. We've got new symbols, we've got new vocabulary, new sounds, and then you have to take all that and you have to translate it onto your instrument. So just stick with it, push through the roadblocks. You're going to have roadblocks, you're going to have days where you feel like you're not getting it, nothing is sinking in, but I promise you if you just keep practicing, keep with it, you'll get it. I remember learning to read music. I originally learned to read music when I was in grade 7 in the band, I played the bass guitar. And to be honest, there's not a lot happening on the bass guitar in grade 7. It's like boom, 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 boom. So then I learned again as an adult to play the piano. And there was days where I felt like I was just staring at the notes and my mind was just blank. Like nothing was making any sense, I wasn't getting it, I just felt so dumb. But I stuck with it and here I am today teaching you how to do it so you can do it. So let's just dive in. First thing we need to know is the symbols. This thing is called the staff. It has five lines and four spaces. Don't get this confused with tabs. Tabs only have four lines and those lines represent the strings on our uke. These lines do not represent the strings. Tabs and the staff are the same in that both tell us what note to play and as the notes get higher up they also get higher in pitch. Our staff will be divided into parts called bars or measures. Each bar will contain a group of beats. That's how we keep track of the music. This is called the bar line and this is called the double bar line. That means it's the end of the song. At the beginning of the staff, you'll see this fancy thing. You've probably seen this on some musical art somewhere. It's called the treble clef. We also often see this. It's called the time signature and it tells us how many beats will be in each bar. In this case, there will be four beats in every bar. We might also see things like 3-4 or 6-8, 2-2 or others. Those are different ways that we feel the music, like the difference between a waltz or rock and roll or country music. 3-4 means there's only three beats in every bar. So 1-2-3, 1-2-3, 1-2-3. That will be like a waltz. 4-4 four, four is what we'll start with. A lot of the music that we listen to on the radio and that we learn is in 4-4 four, four time. Think about how many times you've heard somebody yell, one, two, three, four, in a song. You might also see things like a big letter C. That stands for common time, and it's the same as four, four time. A C with a line through it like this is called cut time, and that's mostly country and folk music, where you feel only two beats in the bar. So for example, the song we learned before, You Are My Sunshine, we don't really feel You Are My Sunshine as being like, one, two, three, four. You are my sunshine. My only sunshine. It does work, but that's not really how we feel it. We feel the song more in cut time. Only two beats. One, two. You are my sunshine. My only sunshine. More about all the time signatures later. These things are called notes. We will start with three different kinds of notes, but just know there are many more different notes. Whole notes are empty circles like this, and they are worth four beats. Half notes look like a whole note, but they have this little stem attached to them. They're worth only two beats. A quarter note is black with a stem, and they're worth only one beat. So if I play my uke on the E string, and I want to play a whole note, I would pluck it, and I would count to four. I would pluck it only once, like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's a whole note. A half note I only worth two beats. But I'm not going to count only one, two, one, two. I'm going to actually count all the way up to four in four, four times. So I'll count one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Music and math, they're best friends. Quarter notes, there's going to be four quarter notes in every bar, which means one quarter note on every beat. One, two, three, four. Let's try playing a few of these notes all in a row. Have a look at this. There's going to be four beats in every bar. We're going to go to our E string and we're going to play, I'll count us in. I'll count to four and then we'll start. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, 
four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good job. So the note is going to be on the staff, and depending on where it is on the staff, that's how we know what note it is and what letter name it is. It's either going to be on a line like that, or it will be in a space like this. We have some fun little mnemonics to help us remember what note goes where. So if the note is on the line, we can use every good boy deserves fudge. Or, as one of my students pointed out, why is it always about boys? What about every girl band deserves fun? Yes, I love it. So choose one that you like and memorize that. So starting from the bottom, if the note is on the first line, that's an E for every good boy, E. Then if we see a note further up on the staff, we can go through the mnemonic in our head. Every good boy deserves, okay, D, that's a D, that's a D note. Notes in the spaces spell out the word face. So we say face in the space. Since we learned the musical alphabet in the previous lesson, you know that all of these letters are coming from our musical alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Then we go back to A. As we go up the staff, the notes are going up through the alphabet. So let's learn how to translate this onto our ukulele. If I start with my A string, this is an A note. And this is the A from face in the space. It's the second space. So I need to know now to make that connection. Every time I see that note in that space, I'm going to go to my uke and I'm going to play the A string. Let's try playing some whole notes, half notes, and quarter notes together. So we'll go to our A string. I'm going to count to four and then we're going to start. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Our second string is an E. That's an E note, and this is the E from Every Good Boy Deserves Fudge. The E from Every. So every time I see that note on that line, I'm going to know I need to pluck this E string. Let's try playing some notes together on E. One, two, three, four. 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 Nice. The third string is our C string. Now you can hear that this is actually lower than A, E, C. So it actually goes below the staff on its own little private line. And this line is called a ledger line. This is also known as middle C. It's the middle note on a piano. It's the, you'll find it on a lot of different instruments, sort of where a lot of music converges. Middle C. So that's our lowest note, our C. Let's try playing some C notes together. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now our G string, we're not going to use the G string very often in melodies right now, but just so you know, this is the G from the Every Good. It's our second line right there. And another fun fact is that the treble clef is also known as the G clef, because the note where the G goes is right through the middle of that swirl. Let's learn a few more notes on our uke. So if we go to our C string, this is a C note. If we go to the second fret of our C string, do you hear how it got higher? So this is going to go upwards on the staff, and this is going to be the next note. It's going to be a D. The D sort of hangs off the bottom of the staff like that. Let's try playing some C's and D's together. One, two, three, four. C, D, C, D, C, D. Let's go to our E string now. I, we already know this is an E note. Every E. If we go to the first fret, do you remember what note comes after E in our musical alphabet? 
It's a little bit higher. And we can see that it's in this space now. If we put all the notes in order, they're going to go up the musical alphabet and they're going to go line space, line space, line space, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So here, first fret of our E string, we have an F. If we go to the third fret of our E string, we have G. E, F, G. Let's try playing some E's, F's, and G's together. One, two, three, four. E, F, G, F, E, two, three, four. E, F, G, F, E, two, three, four. Nice. The next string is our A string. That's our A from face in the space. If we go to the second fret of our A string, we get a B. Right in the middle. I like to think of this as B for bullseye as well. Every good boy. And then we have our C from face in the space on the third fret of our A string. A, B, C. Let's try playing a few A, Bs, and Cs together. One, two, three, four. A, B, C, two, three, four. C, two, B, four. A, two, three, four. Great. So I recommend when you're practicing this stuff, it's good to say the note name out loud, like I was doing, or, and you can count as you're going. So I might have done one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or I could say C, D. Both are really good practice. I encourage you to try both. Um, experiment with them and see what sort of makes the most sense to you. Also when we're learning to read music, it's good practice just to read the notes. Look at something and just don't play anything on your uke and just say, okay, C, D, E, G, F, A, A, B, C, G, G, C, something like that. And then try to play it after. And also play it while you say it or play it and count it. We're learning a lot of different things all at once. So try maybe picking and choosing, just focus on one thing at a time, then maybe counting and saying or counting and playing. It's up to you. So those are all the notes that we're gonna learn for today. There's lots more notes on the staff and there's more notes we will learn on our uke, but for today, just for, for now, just spend the time getting really comfortable with those, recognizing them on the staff, figuring out where you have to put your finger to play them, working on your timing and being consistent and steady. And um, if you guys are interested, there's a book that I recommend. I really like to use the Hal Leonard Ukulele Method book one. You can, there's a link in the description if you want to get it on Amazon or you can find it at any local music store. It goes through everything that we did today and then even more step by step. There's some fun songs and there's lots of other stuff. So for now, uh, just have fun with that. Keep strumming, keep smiling, and I will see you guys in the next video. Okay.